All right, here we go. Let's check out a little review for our uh, chapter on quadratics here. So kind of kind of showing off a graph there, and that's where we actually started with in quadratics. Graph them, they look like parabolas. So we are going to make uh, the shape called parabola, so they're not linear. Uh, because they're x squared. A quadratic is, remember, something to the second power. So a couple different things. So I know this is going to make a parabola. It's either going to open up or open down. And that's determined by if this is positive or negative. So if this is negative, think of a little sad face. Oh, he's so sad. It's opening down. Uh, this is a happy face. It's a positive. If the leading coefficient of the squared term is positive, it's up negative down. So to get a couple things we need the axis of symmetry. This cuts the parabola in half. It's the line right down the middle that cuts the parabola in half. So the formula for that is negative b over 2a. Good news. Uh, I'm going to give you the formula on the uh, test. You've got this one and the quadratic formula. So you'll have those right there. And how do we write this? Remember this is standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. That is the standard form. So if I want to plug this in what is a, b, and c? Well, a in this case is negative 1. b is going to be negative 2. And c, even though we don't need it, is also 2. But later on, we'll need it for quadratic formula. So it's kind of good to have them all. So what is negative b? We've got negative, negative 2 all over 2a. And that is a negative 1. Uh, so negative, negative 2 is positive. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So that gives you a negative 1. So that means at x equals negative 1, you've got this dotted line. So if you get this dotted line in like this, that is the axis of symmetry. That's going to be cutting this thing in half. So the question is, I know this opens down, and the vertex is somewhere. I just don't know where it is on this axis of symmetry. I know it's doing something like this. I just don't know where, if it's up there or if it's down here. So we got to figure out where that thing is. So if you come down here, I know the vertex is at negative 1. I just don't know the y value. So we got to find the y value. So to do it, if we know x is negative 1, we want to know, well, hey, what is y when x is negative 1? So we'll put in our negative 1 for x, and we'll see what we get out for y here. <clears throat> when I square it, it becomes positive, but the negative in front makes it back to negative. Uh, negative times a negative is positive, and then plus that 2. So we're really looking at y is what? 4 minus 1 is 3. So the vertex is going to be at negative 1, 3. So that's going to be right here is the vertex of the parabola. And then um, we can fill in the table the same way. You can plug in negative 4. You can plug in negative 2. You can plug in 0, 2. Or you can just type it right in here. Remember, this was the nice shortcut uh, to give us this. x squared minus 2x. The calculator does all this for you. If you go to up here in the blue, it says table, so second graph. I am actually have it set up so I can ask it questions. And this is awesome because look at the table. I can type this in as negative 4. <coughs> Excuse me, negative 2, 0, and 2. Check that out. Let's put it in. Even if I want to know negative 1, wasn't that my uh, axis symmetry? There it is. So I'm going to save that. That is super cool if you are asking it questions. Well, how do I want it? What is it normally? See here in blue it says table set, so second window. And my independent variable was in ask. If I change it to auto, auto, I don't know where that accent came from. If I change it to auto, uh, and this is where you want to start, usually people start at 0 and this one right here is what you count by. Now go back to your table. It automatically fills it in there. Automatically fills it in. And now you've got a whole table here to choose from everything you want. So you can go and find the places I was talking about. Doesn't matter. Either way, um, you're going to get those same point values. Once you have all this fun stuff, so however you got the table, if you want to just make sure that's a point, negative 4 makes negative 6. So we know negative 4 makes negative 6. We know negative 2 makes 2. So over 2 up to and then because it is symmetric around this point what's this got to be well over here it's got to be here and then uh, it looks like I'm covering it up let's just move that out of the way well, I'm running out of room oh it's behind that one that's perfect uh, what's gonna happen over here it's gonna be the same thing this way so it should look something like this and hopefully that's what our things say 2 makes negative 6 0 makes 2 awesome very, very good. So that's graphing a parabola by hand. Super. How about that? Then we moved on to I would give you a parabola and I'd ask you certain things about it. So one of the things I'd ask you is the roots. These are the roots. They're called a bunch of things. They're also called zeros if I'm finding the zeros. They're also called the solutions if I'm solving it. 
and a lot of times they're called the x-intercept where do they cross the x-axis so when I'm looking for roots in this case I'm looking for a negative 5 and negative 1 are the roots you can say x equals negative uh, 5 and negative 1 how about the vertex of this there is the vertex of the parabola and sometimes I'll ask you call it the max or the min in this case it's a minimum value it's the smallest it ever gets it's over 3 down 4 in this case and it is a minimum value awesome so there's some things maybe I'll give you the graph maybe I won't give you the graph maybe I'll give you this and I'll say hey you need to graph it so let's graph it so if I go in here I've got x squared I'm gonna change my old minus 2x Ooh, almost like the old one uh, minus 4 and then just a couple little things if we zoom standard is that nice viewing 10 by 10 window 10 in every direction and this one fits on there nice and neat if I want to find the zeros remember above trace in the blue is the calculate there it is number two I can go to and say find the zeros so remember when I do this the zeros you want to say okay there's two zeros there's one here and there's one over here I want to find this one so put your cursor right on it then it says left boundary so hit left a couple times then hit enter Go back to where you think the zero is. Now it wants the right boundary, so hit right a couple times. Hit enter. You can guess. I don't guess because I'm too lazy. You hit enter again. So boom, there it is. That is one of my zeros, just like that. And we usually round to the hundred, so this would be negative 1.24. Then you do the same process with the other side. Um, and then you do the vertex. Let's go straight to the vertex. So the vertex, we have to realize, oh yeah, it's a minimum value. So you got to know if it's a max or min. Then the same thing. You go down to where you think the vertex is. So that's where I think the vertex. And honestly, this is a great uh, guess right here. It's probably really close to that. But if left boundary, make sure you get left of it. So hit left four or five times. Go back to where you think that minimum point is. Now go right of it four or five times. And then just guess hit enter again. And then when it does this, that is a calculator off a little bit. That really is one. 0.999999 is really one. So it's one negative five. So that's going to be 1, negative 5. So that is a point. Write it like that. Zeros. Don't write them like coordinates. It's x equals negative 1.24. And then you got to find the other one, which would be over here. Do the same left bound, right bound. So nothing to do with like up or down. It's always left or right. Awesome. So how does that relate? Well, all that is so we can solve them. We're going to find the solution. So this is the exact same thing. You, If I'm going to solve that graphically, I'm just going to say, oh, I can put this in my y equal and see when y equals 0. So if I go back to this bad boy here, and I'm going super fast. Hopefully this is a review uh, for you, and it's all making sense because I am cruising. Uh, you type it in up here. So I want to know here's my y equals. I like to start with my zoom standard window. Whoa, whoa. Can we undo that? Let's bring that back. Oh my goodness. All right, let's try that again. So I like to zoom my standard window. And yes, they both are on there. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for my roots. So again, I'm going to find my zeros. That's how I solve this. I'm just going to do one of them. Uh, I think it's that's as close as I can get to it here. I'm going to go left of it, hit enter. I think it's here. Go right of it, hit enter. And there is one negative two thirds or negative 0.6 repeating. So that is one solution. And then you can find the other one. Awesome. So that is the calculator. Huge way to do it. We're going to graph them, solve them in the calculator. So we have a couple different ways. We have solve by graphing, solve by square roots, and solve by quadratic formula. Graphing, I just did for you. So we're going to put a check here. You're just looking for um, where it crosses the x intercepts. Square roots. Uh, remember, you're trying to get m by itself. So when we're doing square roots, this is nice. We've got 64 equals 2m squared. Got to get m by itself, so I got to divide by 2. So I'm looking at 32 equals m squared. And how do I solve this? This is when I have to introduce that. To get rid of m squared, I square root both sides. So these will cancel. And I'm left with m equals the square root of 32. So again, we had two options here. When that happens, this is plus or minus. There's a positive version and a negative version. Do not forget that. That's easy points. Don't forget that. Because uh, when I square it, it becomes positive. Then I may either say, okay, make that a decimal. If I say make it a decimal, you're like, that's awesome, Mr. Bruss. Thanks for letting me make that a decimal. I like making decimals because look at that. That's it. It's plus or minus 5.65. I mean, or 5.66. So you just say plus or minus 5.66. That's easy. Decimals are awesome. If I say exact value, that just means simplify this if you can. Does 32 break down? It does break down. Remember this? Mr. Kelly showed us some things. This is really 16 times 2. 16 times 2 is 32. I know other things are 32, but 16 is the biggest thing I know the square root of in there. 
Uh, and what's the square root of 16? It's 4. So this is 4 radical 2. So this is the exact answer, plus or minus 4 radical 2. This is the approximate, but I'll tell you what, that's a really good approximate uh, right here. So you got to be able to do both, uh, either one of these, uh, or no, you got to be able to do both of these. Don't pick one. you got to be able to do both. I'm going to have it both on there. Awesome. That brings us to quadratic formula, and I found this hilarious little comic over here. Uh, it looks intense, but it's really not bad if you can keep it all together. First thing you need to do is set it equal to zero. So in this case, I'm just going to subtract 3r squared from both sides. Why? Because they will cancel and give me zero. Then I'm looking at negative 3r squared plus 10r plus 16. Doesn't matter if you bring them to the other side. Doesn't matter. In fact, let's let's bring them to the other side. If I wanted to, I could bring the 10r over there and say it's 3r squared minus 10r minus 16. Either one of these will work. So I'm going to put a big or here. If you bring these over there, or if you bring the 3r over there, I don't care. Uh, I don't know what that really or thing is. We got this going on. Uh, I'm going to do the bottom one because it has the common mistake in it. So when I do my a, b, and c, if I'm using the bottom one, a is 3, b is negative 10, c is negative 16. When this thing is negative, it just kills people. Because here's our formula over here, negative b plus or minus. So I've got negative, negative b, which is negative, negative 10. Well, that's just plus 10. No reason to write negative, negative. It's like saying I'm not never going to do it. It means you are going to do it. That's weird. And again, you still got this plus or minus idea. So here's the hard part. You've got to put this in parentheses if you're going to use a calculator. That is negative 10 squared. Hopefully you know it. 10 times 10 is just 100. It's always positive. This number is always, always, always positive. You square it, it's positive. Even the calculator tells you different. It's because you forgot your parentheses. So then you put in your 4. You put in your A. You put in your C if you have room for it. Negative 16. I'm off the screen. That's OK. And it's a matter of plug and chug. So let's just put, plug this in here. If I'm going to do this, I always do the square root first. If you're going to type in this, even though we know it's 100, it's negative 10 squared. Put those parentheses in there to be safe. You're going to say minus 4a. And then what was c? c was negative 16. We're looking at something like this, 292. So we're looking at 10 plus or minus the square root of 292 all over 2 times 3 is 6. And again, the same thing that happened last time. If you decimal file it, can't, can't decimal file, decimal file, decimal file it. <laughs> uh, if I decimal file it, I'm going to say 10 plus the square root of 292, uh, like this. And I put the whole thing in parentheses. A lot of times, I just like to hit enter here to be safe, then divide it by 6. That takes care of one answer, 4.51. So 4.51 is one of them, so this is r, r equals that. And then if I come back here and just hit second enter, bring it back up, going back there and just change that to minus, it's going to be 10 minus it. So again, the decimal format, I think, is much easier. Hit enter, then divide it by 6. We'll look at negative 1.8. Was it negative 1.18? Yes. OK, so the decimal form is great for this. How about the exact value? Well, now we got to start breaking down 292. This is the last little trick I'm going to show you, and I think it's awesome. If you take 292 divided by all things x squared, that's going to tell you all the perfect squares that go in there. So just like I knew the last one to use 16 and 2, this is going to hook me up and tell me, like, I could use 2 and 73, and I think that's going to be it. Look at the rest are just decimals. They're not friendly. Not going to happen. So this means 2 squared times 73 is 292. So for us, that means what? That means to get 292, we're taking 2 squared is 4, 4 times 73. And that was really 10 plus or minus all of that over 6. I know I'm working backwards here, uh, but that's going to give me what? 10 plus or minus square root of 4 is 2. And that's all over 6. Now let's just break that down. 10 6 split the fraction in half so it's all this it's the whole thing being divided by six so split the fraction we're looking at something like this and then reduce what is 10 over six well two goes in there five times over three so I'm looking at five thirds plus or minus this goes in there once this goes in there three times we're looking at radical 73 over three so hopefully that one's fresh in your mind it's the last one you just did this is a great screen here this is like something I'm gonna screen capture print it hang on my fridge that's awesome I threw that all in there. There is one other method for solving Mr. Sullivan taught us, and really it all goes back to factoring. 
some of these things factor to solve. When you get a nice, pretty answer, like maybe you had to solve this uh, equals zero. I could solve that, no problem. It factors. It's x plus 3, x plus 4. That equals zero. So my solutions would be what makes that 0, negative 3, negative 4. So when you get these nice, pretty answers like this, uh, they factor in their solutions. The f thing is, most things in real life don't factor. So quadratic formula always works. Square roots will work when there's no, like this is m squared, when there's no m. It's just a squared term. Uh, and graphing will work if you can find it in your window. So there's pros and cons to each. That's it. Good luck on the test. Peace out.